Well, good morning. Uh, it is Sunday, the 18th of April. We're, f we're flying through April. And I just had this real sense that uh, I'd like to do a video. But uh, with, you know, I don't know, I came here this morning. Uh, in this prayer room, I came and I was, I was kind of desperate, you know. I, I felt like, I felt like God was sort of like over there. And, and I was over here, you know, and I, and I just wanted to, to, I said, Lord, Lord, would you give me a word? Anyway, God gave me a word from Psalm 1, and we're going to look at that in a moment. But in the meantime, I just thought, let's start with a great hymn. This is, O oh Lord, my God, when I had awesome one. I'm going to play this. It's on the video. You might even want to sing along to it. If, uh, but just, even if you don't sing along to it, let it soak in, you know, the, the scriptures clearly say that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. The promises of heaven are amazing. Let me encourage you. Read, this, read the Bible. Read the scriptures. Believe. Trust. Let faith arise in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I pray whoever listens to this video would be blessed. I pray your favor would rest upon them. I pray you'd guide them and lead them in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us listen to this video. Let us. Oh Lord my God, when I
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give you glory. Yes. We give you honor. Yes. <laughs> we give you praise. How do you like the videos? Well, here we go. Right, okay. The word God has got to, for me to share. I was reading Psalm 1 this morning, and Psalm 1 said, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. They don't walk with the wicked. Or they don't stand in the way of sinners. Who is such a person? They're blessed if they don't do that. They're blessed if they don't walk with the wicked. They're blessed if they don't stand in the way that sinners take. Or sit in the company of mockers. And I don't know about you, but at times in my life, you know, I've, I've walked. I've walked with the wicked. I, I have done. I've stood in the same places that sinners stand. I, I was once in darkness, but now I'm in light amazingly. Our God's amazing. I sit in the company of mockers. I've mocked other people. I have. I have. But, but, the, but the scriptures say, blessed is the one that doesn't do that. Now, I want to be a blessed man. Talk about you, though. You know, the Bible says that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. He said, Elijah was a man just like you, just like us. And, and, and he prayed that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't rain. For three years. And then he prayed it would rain, and it rained. You know, if God is comparing us, you and me, to Elijah, in other words, what God's saying is nothing to do with the person, it's all to do with God. And if you want God to work and to move in your life, and I don't know about you, but I do, if you really want that, you know, we have to take this stuff seriously. We have to apply it to our lives. If you're walking with the wicked, the thing is, stop. Know who your friends are, who your friends are. You know, some people we call our friends, but actually they're not really our friends. They don't really care for us. They, they might, might just care for us or walk with us to see what they can get. But as soon as, as soon as that channel of provision has stopped, as soon as that channel of provision is broken, then where's your friends? You know, what a friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> Our Lord Jesus, you know, Jesus said that he stands at the door and knock and if anyone would open the door and welcome him in, knocking on the door of your life, open the door and he said he'll come in and eat with them. But look at this Psalm 1, it says, verse 2 says, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, that is the way of the Lord, the law of the Lord, it means, it, it means, it means everything to do with God, everything. Everything to do with God. It's not just talking about the Ten Commandments. It's talking about God's law. God's law in through creation. You know, God speaks things into work. Speaks things into being. He's a creator God. And said, whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't do it day and night. Not really. Not at all. I do it a bit, you know, like I get up every morning perhaps and I'll come down here to worship and pray. But... But through the day as well, and I'll think of God, and, and you should do the same. Too many of us, you know, and I did this for too many years. I went to church on a Sunday, I might have gone to a Bible study in the week, and that were it, and then I got on with my life. Guess what? Really, I was just in set with the wicked. <laughs> I went, really, there's nothing really changed, but I didn't know that. You know, Satan's deceiving and he's cunning, and Bible says that Jesus himself said, he said, be careful, he's the father of lies. He comes to steal and kill and destroy. But God said, Jesus said, I've come that you can have life and have it to the full. Would well, you want life today? Do you want life and want it to the full? I mean real life. I don't mean life walking with the wicked. I don't mean life standing with sinners. I don't mean life that sits in the company of mockers. And many people do that. Get a little bit of alcohol down your neck and what happens? Hey, you know. You know, and so many people are like this. But God's looking for something fresh and something different. God's looking for a holy people, a holy nation, a, a, a holy priesthood, a people whose heart is for God. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Do you want to be saved? I want to be saved. No, I don't just want to be saved. I want to soar in God. I want to see the move of God in my life and in my, as long as I'm walking on this earth, as long as this flesh and blood is moving and breathing and worshipping and seeing all that God's created, that I want to be used by God. What about you? You know, there's a way to do it. There's a way to do it. There is. said, so you can be blessed, but you have to stop walking instead with the wicked. Mm -hmm. And you might not think you are, mm -hmm. but, but you know, the Bible says, work out 
your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, take it seriously. Because if you don't get it right, you're in trouble. If I don't get it right, I'm in trouble. And how do we get it right? We come before God. And then it looked, listen to this, it said in verse 3, and this is the verse. This is the one that God really spoke to me for you this morning. And it's this, it's verse 3. That if, if you, uh, blessed is the one who doesn't walk with the wicked, doesn't stand with the sinners, doesn't sit with the mockers, who's delighted in the light, but that person is like a tree planted by streams of water. Mm. Planted by streams of water. Did you notice that? Planted by what? Water. Streams of water. And the thing is, what we have to do, we have to consider the water, consider the river, consider the stream that you are planted by. Are you planted by a stream that is full of wickedness? Are you planted by a stream that's full of anxiety? Are you planted by a stream that's full of uh, guilt or unforgiveness or shame? Are you planted by a stream that's full of addiction? Which stream are you planted by? Because the stream that God's talking about is his stream. It's the pure living water. The stream that doesn't go with the wicked. The stream that doesn't go with the sinner. The stream that doesn't go with the mockers. If we're planted by a stream and we've got... It's a polluted stream. Is your stream polluted? <laughs> What is the pollution in your stream? Is it polluted by addiction? What is it? Is it polluted? This is a stream. And God wants us to, to look. Where are we planted? And I want to tell you today that the best place that you can be planted is by the, by the stream of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the river of God. The river of God. It said that person is planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. So the stream that we're planted in reflects on the fruit that we give. Okay. So if we're, if we're planted by the stream of God and the Bible said that the fruits of the Spirit are love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, is that reflected in your life? Is it? Do you see love? Do you see patience? Listen, the Word of God, right? The Bible said it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts. It cuts. It divides. These words, they're supposed to get your attention. They're supposed to make you feel like, actually, I'm not doing that. I'm actually planted by a stream and I go to a pub every now and again and I go and get drunk. And that's the stream that I'm planted in. When I realise that and I get drunk or I take drugs and I get out of my head on drugs or whatever it might be, then my life isn't that great. The fruit of that can be adultery. The fruit of that can be robbing people. The fruit of that can be bad tempered. The fruit of the stream that we planted by reflects the stream, what's in the stream. It's that simple. And God's saying, that person who doesn't walk with the wicked, doesn't sit, stand in the sinners, doesn't sit in the company anymore, because that stream is a stream that would yield fruit in season. And it said, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever they do prospers. You see, there's a prospering next to the river of God. You'll prosper. You'll prosper. And it's not talking about prosper like you're going to have a huge bank account with loads and loads of money and then the, that money is... It's not talking about that sort of prosperity, although that can come as well. Uh, I'm not saying that can't come. But what he's talking about, he wants you to prosper in your spirit and in your soul and in your life and everyone around you, in your family. Do you want to see your family saved? Do you want to see your children and your children's children? The blessings of God are for them as well as for you. And this is our God. So I want to encourage you today, you know, We've come through this coronavirus and in a way which kind of like waking up it's like it's like that the government and the whole world or whatever this virus is almost like it locked everything down, it shut everything down, put it to sleep in a way. But now it's awakening. Now how are you gonna wake? Are you gonna wake cursing the darkness? Or are you gonna wake lighting a candle? Come on. Come on, it's down to you and down to me. And I want to encourage you today to worship God. It's just a short video to encourage you. And the things to think about, Psalm 1, great Psalm, great Psalm. Verse 3, that person is, plant, is like a tree planted by streams of water. So the thing to reflect on today in your life and for me to reflect in is what's in the water? <laughs> what's in the water? What have you left? What are you pulling out? You know, some stuff we've got to let just rush, rush by. Imagine a river. Have you ever thrown a piece of wood in a river? It floats, doesn't it? You know, there's stuff floating by the river of your life all the time. And we can reach in and we can pull things out of that river. But what are you going to pull out of it? Are you going to keep pulling out the, the bottle, the alcohol? Are you going to keep pulling out the drugs? Are you going to keep pulling out the sexual 
immorality. How are you going to keep pulling? What are you going to pull out? Because whatever you're pulling out and you're feeding on, that's going to reflect in your life. And the river of God is pure and it's holy. And God wants us to be filled with his spirit. So be encouraged today. Hallelujah. Today, Sunday, the uh, 18th, I think. I think it's 18th. The 18th of April. Be encouraged. God's with you. God's my own to pray. Father, I just pray for this word. I pray for my life, Lord God, that this river, that you'd enable me, Father God, to just assess what's in my river. The river that I'm planted by, the side of a God. Is it a river of despair? Is it a river of frustration? Is it a river of disappointment? Is it a river of anger? Oh God, well then I just pray, oh God, that you'd send the, the river men. <laughs> send the guys in, oh God, to clean my river up. Send your Holy Spirit, oh God, to clean my river up. I, I want to confess my sins, oh God. Perhaps I haven't been as I could be this week, but I want to give you glory and honour and pray. And I pray for whoever might be listening to this today, that you would bless them and encourage them and strengthen them in the name of Jesus. Amen.